A short while back, I made a video about an HP 705G5 mini PC powered by a Ryzen APU, and I have to say, this wasn't my best work. By all means, check it out at the link above if you like a good train wreck, but I was working around some slight flaws in my methodology. You see, before I could do any real testing with different RAM combinations or software configurations or anything like that, uh, I broke it. Given that I couldn't find another model for even close to the price I paid, I went looking for affordable alternatives. After a bit of research, I found this, the Lenovo M75Q. It has the same tiny form factor, the same RAM setup, even a slightly upgraded CPU, and costs the same money. So, let's call this one a do-over. In case you skipped over the previous video, I'll give you a super fast rundown. These 1 litre mini PCs are smaller than any ITX case I've ever seen, but nevertheless often have upgradable parts. This one in particular, the Lenovo M75Q, has a socketed AMD Ryzen 5 Pro 3400GE quad-core multi-threaded APU uh, with 8GB of single-channel DDR4 RAM and a 256GB NVMe SSD and was purchased on eBay for £300. Straight out of the box, just as with the HP machine, the Valorant and Fortnite benchmarks are lower than I'd like. As the RAM is being shared between the system and the GPU, that seems like a reasonable place to start upgrading for better performance. Swapping the single stick of 2666 for a pair of 3200s, the locked down Lenovo BIOS prevents me from changing the frequency of the RAM to its fullest meaning, we're stuck at 2666. Even so, conventional wisdom says that switching from single channel to dual channel RAM should improve FPS, especially with an APU, however it's not quite as simple as that. Benchmarking Fortnite sees up to 20% higher averages from the additional RAM stick alone, but the frame pacing remains awful. Likewise, Valorant sees substantially increased averages but reduced 1% and 0.1% lows. This actually works out slightly worse than the scores I saw from an Intel i7 7700HQ and integrated HD graphics last year, which isn't exactly what I'd hoped to see from this much celebrated AMD processor. I had a feeling something wasn't quite right. The Ryzen 5 Pro 3400GE in this PC is a low TDP version of the 3400G, which makes sense when used in a tiny PC that doesn't have much room for cooling, but we're not troubling our thermal system much here. In AMD's Ryzen Master software we could do something about that reduced TDP, but unfortunately the Lenovo is so locked down the software refuses to install. Thanks to a commenter, I was made aware of some third-party software that allows the CPU's behaviour to be modified without Ryzen Master, though all of the various applications I found were either focused on laptop CPUs or just straight-up blue-screened. In a sort of throwaway line at the end of the last video on the HP unit, I said that the APU's performance might be being limited by power and a thread I'd read online seemed to back that up. Apparently the M75Q was briefly available with a 135 watt PSU as an option, and some users reported that PSU helped obtain much better results in games. Throwing caution and money to the wind, I ordered a 135 watt PSU on eBay. I have to admit I was a little hesitant when it arrived as it's significantly bigger and heavier and doesn't look much like the standard model. Thankfully the increased power output didn't start a fire or fry any components, so I took that as a good sign and started by rerunning my Fortnite benchmark. And holy shit, it worked. Average frame rates almost double. Frame pacing smooths out beautifully, beautifully for an APU, and we're still looking at some pretty acceptable temperatures. In performance mode, averages hit 92, and 1% lows drop just a little below 60. If you prefer the extra fidelity of the regular DX12 renderer, competitive settings, i.e. everything to minimum with view distance to maximum, still manages 48 FPS average and 1% lows of over 30. 
Valorant is totally redeemed with averages in the 90s and 1% lows over 60. Not quite up to the performance you'd see from a dedicated CPU GPU setup, and given the game's reliance on CPU performance, I can see this possibly running better on a 4000 series APU. It still ends up handily defeating the Intel i7 I tested last year. So I probably went in a little bit over optimistic of the success of the previous two tests, but I can confirm that Rocket League is sort of playable at max settings in 1920x1080 if you're happy with a 30fps experience. Dropping to a performance setting smoothed things out dramatically, giving us double the fps and making things much more esports friendly. Warzone is still kind of borderline unplayable for me on this PC, and only partly because I suck at it. Seriously, how the f do I miss this badly? Uh, with resolution effectively at 1280 by 720 through scaling, and quality set to its lowest, averages are an acceptable 45, but 1% lows of 13 are just painful to deal with. I'm no fan of Apex Legends or any game that doesn't give me the option to play solo. It's much easier to hide my ineptitude when the rest of the group isn't relying on me. That being said, it was this or PUBG and I think the internet might finally be over that game. So here we are. The Lenovo M75Q handles Apex much better than it does Warzone. I ran this game at 720 with low settings, turned the texture quality up a little and still saw a 67 FPS average with 1% lows of 44. Valheim remains something of an unwieldy beast considering the Morrowind levels of visual complexity on display. Dropping settings to 720 low is an absolute necessity and that will deliver averages of 28 and 1% lows of 13. That is at least in the DirectX 11 renderer. Thanks to a timely update to RevaTuner, I was able to benchmark Valheim using the Vulkan renderer and can confirm that this sees an increase in averages to 31 and 1% lows to 14.7 FPS. Only about a 10 or 15% uplift, but every little helps. Genshin Impact, aka Breath of the Waifu, still looks great and plays very well here, with resolution at 1080 and quality set to medium. Averages run at around the 40 FPS mark, and 1% lows stick above 30 for the most part. Using a 30 FPS limit might be the smoothest way to enjoy this one. My first instinct with Cyberpunk was to pull the emergency cord, turn on the dynamic resolution scaler, set the FPS target to max, and just take what I could get. This resulted in a pretty solid 30 plus FPS experience as I played through what is either Night City or possibly some impressionist watercolour painting of a velvet pillow. It's soft is what I'm saying. Having checked a couple of other videos on the game, I realised I was being overly cautious, and while running at 720 without resolution scaling, the FPS dipped below 30 quite frequently. At least the game's fantastic visual style wasn't so horribly compromised. I'd probably still take GeForce Now over this, but if your internet sucks or if you don't want to get kicked out every hour, this is far from being the worst performance I've ever seen. The Lenovo M75Q then doesn't quite tick all the boxes for the perfect micro PC for me. Once the power limit throttling is negated, we're still stuck with a system that's held back by a 2666 RAM speed limit. However, so far, it's the best value, best performing, tiny form factor gaming PC I've tried. Should you buy one? Well, given its relatively limited use case scenario, and the fact that you could buy a bigger PC with fewer restrictions for less money, you really have to want one to justify the purchase. But yes, 
If none of these caveats put you off, this is an excellent micro PC and well worth the money I paid. It's dead silent at idle and surprisingly quiet, even under heavy load. The 135 watt power supply is needed to get the kind of performance I'm seeing here, but you should exercise caution and make sure you're getting an official PSU that matches the voltage of the original. And be warned that this may invalidate any warranty you have. One of these PSUs should set you back between 35 and 50 pounds, and if you get the 8GB model of the PC, you'll also be needing a second stick of DDR4-2666 for another 20 to 30 pounds. Don't do what I did and waste 70 pounds on a 3200 kit, it won't help. Someone mentioned to me that a kit that could hit 3200 at 1.2 volts could work, but I've got no way of validating this and I don't really have the time or money to track one down. If you're thinking of using one of these for an HTPC, then on the positive side it has a vacant slot for a 2.5 inch drive should you need it for local media storage. If you wanted to use it for Steam in-home streaming, Stadia, GeForce Now or anything like that, it doesn't include Wi-Fi or Bluetooth so factor in a dongle and or an Ethernet solution to hook it up. I'm open to suggestions for my next tiny PC to look at. I don't feel the need to try out the Gen 2 model of the M75Q as I've seen the ETA Prime video and the 4000 series APUs seem to trade off CPU cores for GPU cores and I don't see that benefiting more than a couple of specific games. If I could get one with a 4650G or better for say £400, maybe I'd give it a try but any more than that and we're into the territory of those fascinating boxes I've seen on AliExpress with laptop i7s and discrete GTX 1650s. Actually, that's a thought. Let me know in the comments if you think I should risk buying one of those AliExpress mini PCs next. While you're there, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.